Welcome, welcome, welcome. Today we are going to be looking at the ITC608T controller. It's just sitting here on my Vipar Spectra XS2000 light. Uh, the, at least the instructions are. And we're just going to have a quick look at uh, what it can do quickly and look at uh, one of the uh, setups that I have uh, for this. Uh, we'll go in depth in another video through all the different functions. I'm just going to tell you quickly what it does. Um, it is a temperature and or humidity controller that has two inputs and two outputs. This controller is particularly powerful because it allows you to either increase or decrease whatever the work you're trying to do. So if you're trying to heat water, it will add heat to water. If you're trying to cool water or an area, it will cool that area. The same thing goes for humidity. It will either try to humidify or dehumidify based on what you want it to do. And at a glance, you can actually tell what's going on here. So what you can see here is that these two lights are lit up. What you can't see is that there's a light here that's not lit up and a light down there that's not lit up. And the reason for that is that this one here on the temperature, that light being there means this is adding heat and this light being here means that's dehumidifying. So that's removing humidity. So at a glance, you can tell what's going on. When these lights are lit up on this one or this one, it depends on whether this one or this one are actually engaged. So when the sensor on this side, be it temperature or humidity sensor, is in operation, in this particular case, it's hum uh, temperature because you can see it's degree C. So that's this one, and we'll follow that down. And we can follow that all the way down to a probe going here in the water. And you can barely see it right there. Hunk of metal, not a big deal. We're not here to look at the actual unit. We're here to talk about what it can do. So that right now I have a set point of 18 degrees Celsius and a set, uh, the actual value is 17.9 degrees. I can set even what my differential is. So I'm allowed to even go and say, I want this unit to uh, allow whatever it is to reduce down to whatever value I want it to be before it engages. And in this case, I put a differential of one degree. So when that cools down to 17 degrees Celsius, it will energize. And what is it energizing? Well, this is actually going to a little aquarium heater here. I don't know if you can see it, but that's that black thing with the blue dot on the end. And there you go. So, real quick, let's say you get this and you want to quickly set it up, no problem. I plugged in the temperature on the left and the humidity on the right. That's what works for me. And that's what I do. And in here, if I wanted to dehumidify, I would actually plug that in. Right now, I'm using it just for sensing, and I have it sensing the humidity in my cloning chamber. Now, other things that you can do is you can set alarms, low and high alarms, and it's really cool. So before you actually go ahead and program one of these, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to set yourself up a, uh, a plan. So you write down, what do you want it to be? What mode you want it to be in? What units? What's your target temperature? What's your differential? I.e., when it will it turn on? When will it turn off? And so at 18 degrees in a heating mode, at one degree Celsius differential, it is on at any temperature equal to or less than 17 degrees, and it turns off at any temperature greater than or equal to 18 degrees C. When it turns on, if it's in between 17 and 18 degrees C, it will uh, not energize until it degrades down to the turn on point. And then I say I want my alarm to be high at 20 degrees C and low at 16 degrees C. 
And because I'm not using a cooling, there's no compressor delay, but this thing is that powerful. So you have to set up a plan and we'll talk a bit a bit about how I get to these numbers uh, more in the application side when we do an in-depth one uh, for that. All right, so the first thing you're gonna wanna do, you're gonna go right to the first page, go to your quick guide, check to make sure you have everything that you want, and then you decide what you want to do. Temperature control, dual temperature control, humidity control, temperature and humidity control. This is the most popular one. It comes, this particular uh, version came with a temperature and a humidity probe, um, a temperature probe and a humidity sensor if you really want to call it that. And they tell you to go to part six. So that's what you do. Just zip down to part six. Keep going until, and this is so hard for me to do, sorry about this guys, part six, yay, you get there. And they tell you what everything does in this particular case, okay? Now, all the different inputs are there. They tell you your functions, everything that you're going to be doing, whether you see it's cooling if it's the top LED, it's heating whether it's the bottom LED, and you can see it's the bottom LED. It's dehumidifying if it's the top LED, and it's humidifying if it's the lower LED. And sure enough, it's the upper LED there, right by the 9, and you can see that that would mean dehumidification. Okay, um, we're not going to go through the entire uh, uh, setup of that, but you know then all you do is you follow the instructions they're very good and you first determine which part you're going to go to and if you're doing dual just go straight to part six trust me and follow through with the chart and you have your humidification and your dehumidification and one of the things that you do when you get into that it's a little bit confusing but i'll, I'll show you right now you press and hold that you see that t that's temperature. If you change that to humidity, you're not changing any mode. What you are doing is you are timing to de determining whether you are programming the temperature side or the humidity side. All right, and then you go for it. So we're gonna go up to temperature there, sorry, and click enter. And then your heating cooling function, what are you? Well, we're heating, I'm not cooling, I'm heating etc. And then you can go through all of the different setups and carry on with that. Just let it sit, it times out and it goes back into uh, the regular operation mode. So there you have it. Quick way to get to where you need to go. The instructions are clear. Um, they, they've been well translated. It is a better translated uh, instruction book that I've seen on the market. Um, I have to hand it to them. They actually uh, did a good job um, in that department because <laughs> I have seen some um, real scratch the head uh, uh, ones. So there you go. This is my ITC 608T by Inkbird. I have been using this for 10 months now almost nine and a half. I have had zero issues. Um, I have used the temperature probe in water, although it says it's not meant for that, in water for the entire 10 months that I've used it, and not a single issue. Um, I take it out, I've compared it to, uh, for calibration, and it's there. Uh, it's bang on with um, a, a standard thermometer. I have um, industrial type thermometer to compare it with. Alright guys, give them a shout. They often have sales. What you do is uh, you follow them and then you wait for those last minute deals. And um, the guy who you want to get to know is Akong for North America, so for Canada and the United States. A-K-O-N-G is how you spell his name. Um, find him on Facebook and um, uh, you will 
find deals every once in a while and uh, get some great deals on these products. And they have some other amazing stuff, Wi-Fi control, temperature controllers and humidity controllers. And I'm going to be getting to those in a few weeks when I have time to actually purchase them and test them. All right. Nice and long one. Over 10 minutes on this. Wow. Guys, have a great day. Bye.